This video is all about the seat belts in an early Mercedes R107 SL. The car that these came out of, I think it was a 1975 450 SL. And as you can see, to put it mildly, they are pretty knackered and unusable, which is a shame because I was hoping to use these in the 1975 280 SL that we're doing, but these bits are just too far gone to use. I thought it might be interesting for people to see how these seat belts actually come together. So I'm going to take one to pieces. Um, you could potentially refurbish your own seat belt. There's normally three things that go wrong with them. Either the webbing here wears out and you can just get your seat belt rewebbed. Um, there's a place in London that does it, it costs about £35. They will also um, replace these bits here and also the pillar loops as well for about £60. So you send them their, your own your old seat belt and they'll reweb it, replace that and that. It'll cost you about £60. Or you can actually just get a brand new set of seat belts. As I say, I'll give you details at the end of the video where you can get that done. The company in London that we've been talking to, they can do an SL seat belt for, seat belt for about £60 plus VAT. And that will come with the, um, the tongues here and the receivers. They won't be genuine clip-on period seat belts, um, but they'll look very similar. What I want to try and do is, as far as possible, retain the OEM look of this car. So we're going to... Um, retain the clip and receivers those are the bits that this clip into those are both fine on the car and I've got two choices I can either go and try and find a couple of these in better condition these were common to many Mercedes and similarly these um, chrome pillar loops were also common to many Mercedes both the rear seat belts I think in the one two three and cars like that had these in but in my experience trying to get second hand one of these in good conditions is really really difficult now there's a Mercedes part number on there one two three six five eight double zero three zero but that part number just re refers to the plastic casing here it does not refer to the actual chrome loop underneath now I'm no great expert in these seat belts but there's a few things I have noticed these seat belts which as I say came from a 75 450 SL were attached to the rear footwell of the car and you can get special anchor plates um, if yours is corroded, you can get those from SJS Car Styling in Germany. They're about £6 each. Or your seat belt is actually bolted to the side of your seat. Now, I think, I'm not sure about this, but I think that these plastic um, bits here, they were not common to all SLs. It depended whether or not your car, your seat belt was bolted to the rear footwell or whether it was bolted to the... Um, seats. So if anyone knows that the definitive answer to that, please let me know. If you've got an old SL, maybe you could have a look at your seat belts and tell me whether you've got these plastic bits on your seat belts and whether your seat belt here is anchored to the floor of the car or to the side of the seat. Be really interested to know that. Before I start, the SLs, as far as I'm aware, came with the early ones came with two types of seat belt. They came with clip-on ones, which is this here, and also with REPA ones, R-E-P-A. And I've done a video on the REPA seat belts, which the other 280, the 1983 280SL had in it. So if anyone's interested in the REPA seat belts, there is a video somewhere on this site. This seat belt um, came out of the parts car, and you can see that somebody's had a good go at trying to get in there, presumably because the seat belt was jamming. And if you are ever going to take one of these seat belts to pieces, you need to realize that there's actually two metal rivets here that you're gonna to need to drill out here and here. So what I may do is just take this to pieces. I've never taken one of these to pieces, but it's always good to know how things work. Take it to pieces and see what's actually inside one of these seat belts. I was mentioning that this says caution, do not remove. Presumably that's because the seat belt is under tension and if you do let it go through there, which I accidentally did. It will spin round at a very high speed and potentially take your finger off. Anyway, we've already taken one side off here um, to reveal the mechanism. Now, this is not symmetrical, so I'm going to take the other side off and just see if I can figure out how this works. Once you've drilled that rivet really out, you should just be able to pull this out like so. If you're careful, you can get this off without breaking it. But it is, 
there we go. The reason for that warning not to take the cover off is presumably because this spring is under tension. And if you take that cover off and you don't realise that, this spring could spring out and take your eye out. <laughs> the reason they don't want you to take that cover off is because you might accidentally do what I just did, which is allow this spring to jump out of its case like so. Hopefully it's not knackered, but we've very carefully got to try and thread this string spring back in that case now. Once you take that little panel off, you can take out the pin. Once you've got that pin out, the white cog just slides out the bottom. You've got to drill the end of that rivet off to get that cog off. That pin can be really difficult to get out if your seat belt is rusty. Once you've wiggled out that metal cog, you should be able to get the plastic spindle out, which holds the seat belt. Even with the whole seat belt disassembled, it's still really tricky to get that seat belt out. It'd be much easier with a new non-rusty bit of seat belt we actually had to cut our seat belt to get the metal bit out but it should just slide out the end plastic bushings just clip out and the last thing to come out is that metal piece there that just pulls out if you do ever need to refurbish your seat belts and you plan on doing it yourself, these seat belts are about 275 centimetres long. This bit is just still sewn together and folded over there. I imagine that's pretty standard for many cars, but this is from a Mercedes SL 107 SL, 275 centimetres long. If you have decided to refurbish your own seat belt, putting this thing together is quite tricky and it goes together in a certain order. The way I would do it is first of all start with the casing and put these two bushings in. The two holes are different so the bushings will only fit in one hole but remember the flat side of the bushing goes outwards and these open side of this bushing also face outwards. After you've put these two bushings in here the very next thing you need to do is slide this metal bit in like so if you forget to do that and you go through the whole rig rule of putting a seat belt uh, plastic spool in there and you've forgotten to do that you will kick yourself because you'll have to take the whole thing to pieces again and start again next up you're going to put this plastic bit in and it's got this lip on that side and that lip goes near the biggest bushing like so after you've put that plastic belt holder in, you're going to put these two pieces in next. The cog goes in first. Now remember to put it in the same way you took it out, so the teeth are facing the same direction. And then this is going to slide through that hole and lock into that cog. It's not symmetrical, so it only fits in there one way with the three teeth. So you slide this piece in first, like so. And then this piece will slide in and lock into, it lock into that. After you've got that in, the, now comes the tricky bit, which is to actually put the seat belt on. Now I've just sewed this very roughly because I'm not actually going to use this seat belt. But the first thing to remember is the thread or the sewing will face away from you. And then this is going to loop over like so. And you're going to basically be sliding the pin into that loop, albeit through the casing. If you do it right, the loop is going to look something like that. And the challenge is simply to slide the pin through. Now, before you start sliding that pin through, just remember to put the washer on. It's really annoying having spent hours 
getting all in the right position to find that you've forgotten to put the wash on. Now, obviously that pin slides through an awful lot better if it was brand new and shiny. If it's rusty like that, it's got an awful lot of friction, makes the life a lot harder. Actually, after many hours and much swearing, you'll get that pin back in like that. And it'll look like this on the other end. And you're going to put this fitting here in. Now this pin is keyed, so it only fits one way over there. The next piece to go on is this. And then once you've put that on, this little cog goes over the top. When you take this apart, you have to drill out a rivet that holds that cog on. Um, and to put it back together again, I've just countersunk that cog slightly and just used a small screw, I think, left over from some computer somewhere just tapped a hole in there. In fact, I didn't even bother tapping a hole. I just used a couple of screws, ruined the threads on the first two, and then cut some threads using the actual screws, and that secures that on there. And you'd put a little bit of um, a thread locker on there to stop that coming out. secured that in, you would slide this in like so, align that up, and then lock that in with the pin. And the pin is just a push fit. Once the pin is in all the way, there's a little panel that clips over the top, stops that coming out. And once again, that's just a push fit. Just make sure that you've got this little metal bit actually in there, like so. And before you put the next bit on, which fits in there, I would suggest you actually attach the spring to the end of it, like so. And then this has got two little push buttons that clip in, one there and one up here. Just need to push those in firmly. To finish this off, you just click the plastic cover over, remembering that that hole there is going to align with that hole there. Now, these originally had rivets in there. You could use um, just round headed screws with a tiny little bolt on the other end just with a um, little bit of thread lock or if you had a rivet gun with the rivets that long you can just re-rivet that. Now, as I mentioned we won't be using this again because it's somebody's been in there and obviously I don't know didn't know how to get it to pieces and crack the whole thing. Just before you put the spring on it is really important to remember to actually wind the seat belt in all the way so that all the seat belt is on this spool, at least most of the seat belt, I should say, because it's going to be about half a meter between the spool and where the chrome pillar hoops hit the um, chrome trim on the car. You want to do that before you put the spring on so that when you pull the seat belt out, as you would if you were putting the seat belt over your body, this is going to turn and it's going to um, wind up this spring. If you put this on here, when the seat belt is out all the way, there won't be any tension on the spring. It's also worth mentioning there's two nodules on the back here, and the, those two nodules lock into these holes here and here. And rather counterintuitively, you put the spring on so that it's facing you like so, and lock those um, two nodules into the holes wherever they are like so. It is very easy for that to spring out and then you'll spend hours of your life trying to get it back in. The way we did it in the end was we put that pin in an electric drill and then just wound it in holding this flat in there. Actually took two of us to do it. So this simply fits over the end there. Obviously that piece of spring in the middle there fits over there. You just need to put the case over it. Clip this on, you may just need to get a, plier, a pair of pliers to do it, but make sure you don't damage the plastic. So just wrap some cloth or tape around the pliers when you do it. Having been through the whole process of disassembly and reassembling one of these clip-on seat belts, it is not something I would recommend for the faint-hearted. It is a really tricky job. And if you were going to do this simply because you wanted to replace your rusty pillar hoops or your um, anchor plate here, a much, much easier way of doing it is to cut the belt or the thread here and slide everything off this end. Don't be fooled into thinking that you could just take these bits to pieces and then undo the seat belt at this end. It's really tricky to do. And with the benefit of hindsight, I would just give this to a professional to do. So at the end of the video, I'll give you a few links of where you can get this done or where you can simply buy replacement units. Just arrived from Lithuania is a set of Mercedes seat belts that we paid about a hundred pounds. These seat belts are not off an SL, 
but they are clip-on seat belts. So let's see what we've got here. The need of these seat belts is this end clip there. And I can see that those are an exact match. So we have the receivers on the car. That's the thing that you click into. And those receivers also are ludicrously expensive. You're going to pay £50 at least for a good second-hand one. But hopefully our receivers are actually both in good condition. But we'll be able to use these little buckles from here. Now, this casing here actually looks to be exactly the same as an SL casing. Yes, it is, but I can see that the back of it is slightly different for some reason. This has got this stud in there, which actually just screws out. The seat belt could potentially just fit straight into the SL. Um, the end bits here, we will have to degust and paint. They're very slightly different from the SL end bits. What came off the 450 SL parts car looks very very similar but the hole here is actually in like an upside down smiley face and inside there is this plastic fitting over which the seat belt rides to stop it rubbing on the metal on this particular seat belt here that's just a hole and it doesn't have that plastic bit and sadly these seat belts here are have plastic guides as opposed to the originals which were chrome now that's not a tragedy if you put that on the car i think very few people would ever um, notice or realize but what we will seek to do is source some good chrome runners like that these were common to many mercedes so what we'll probably find is that we're able to buy a set of seat belts off another mercedes for considerably less then you would pay for SL seat belts. Just take that bit off, cut the end bit off, um, and re sew it up. Similarly, the clip and label on here is going to be slightly different. So, to keep things OEM, what you would do is you would sew on the original label. The other thing that's different about these seat belts, whichever car this came off, um, it doesn't have the plastic cover here. So we will take that off of the other car and potentially rivet that back through the seat belt. These seat belts that we've got from Lithuania actually have this bolt sealed in there. It's got some special clip so you cannot undo it. Well, we finally got that out. You can see that's the original clip and bolt, but you can see that it's not a screw in fitting at all it's a fitting that's kind of hammered in the other seat belt well, rather than drilling that out i'm going to see if i can actually bash it out with a hammer just using an old pickaxe handle and sure enough there you go sometimes it's not until you actually take something to pieces that you realize how it all goes together so if you do come across that problem you buy seat belts for your sl and they've got this fitting in you just bash it out rather than drilling it out Again, we're going to use the finger file to get all the rust off this fitting here. We've now masked up the seat belt and we're going to spray that with rust encapsulator on both sides and then tomorrow we're going to um, move it around and do the bit that we can't get to. Just painted that with the red rust encapsulator morning and we just need to move this around like that paint the bit that we couldn't paint yesterday. It's quite a long process doing it that way, but it saves us having to cut the belt off and re-sew it. It's the next day and we just need to spin these buckles around the other way and paint the other bit like so. We've finished painting the ends of those seat belts we got from Lithuania. It's not perfect, but it's a million times better than it was and 10 million times better than what came off the car. Now, originally my plan was just to use those belts from Lithuania just for the tongues, but I may actually put the seat belts on as is and for the moment go with these plastic um, pillar hoops as opposed to trying to source chrome ones. At a later date, what I may do is send both of these belts off to um, a rewebbing place in London together with these lips, these tongues here, and just use original receivers, get them to put these tongues on, get them to put these plastic sheaths on here with new rivets and get them to take the original labels off here and put them on the belt so everything will look pretty much OEM. I've been talking to this company in London, quickfitbs.com up here um, about seat belts. As I mentioned, just to get your belt rewebbed, i.e. the material replaced is about £35 plus VAT 
and to get a new seat belt is about 60 pounds plus fat. Now, you need to talk to them first because your seat belts requirements might be slightly different or slightly unusual, but that actually seems like a really reasonable price compared to what you can pay on eBay for genuine Mercedes seat belts. You can get your seat belts in a range of different colors, and more importantly, they do sell these chrome hoops here, the chrome pillar hoops, and these anchor um, plates here as well at different angles and different styles etc. You can get SL replica seat belts from SJS Car Styling either via eBay or you can go directly to them but as you can see they are not cheap plus they are not going to be clip-on or wrapper seat belts if you're in the slightest bit bothered about um, the originality of your car.